Hey guys, it's Natasha and welcome back to this week's video. Today I will be talking about bookish pet peeves and mostly book edition pet peeves. I was actually sitting and thinking what kind of peeves do I have when I start reading books and the issues around them and I thought it would be a fun video, also a very good discussion video. I've listed nine pet peeves that I could think of on a whim. If you have more, comment down below but this is what I was thinking of when I thought about books and what annoys me of certain books. If you're excited for this video, please like it. Subscribe for more bookish content if you're into that. And without any further ado, let's get on with the video. So the first bookish pet peeve I have is books that come in different sizes, mainly book series that come in different sizes. The, these books are the same well they look like they are the same size but 10,000 skies above you is slightly bigger than a thousand pieces of you and uh, I have multiple books that have these issues where one is just smaller than the other and then I'm like they are the same covers kind of so I like them this one's texture is just a bit different than this one but why do you have two different sizes that doesn't make sense to me. Like if you bring out a book series and the covers and whatnot tend to be the same, why are you changing the sizes? It just doesn't make sense to me. The second pet peeve I have is books that come without blurbs. I see there's a new trend going on where they take the book and then they just put on, say for example, New York Times says, this is the new Game of Thrones. I don't care if it's the new Game of Thrones. I want to know what this book is about. There's a reason why we have a blurb there. There's a reason why we used to have blurbs there. Now you have to go on Goodreads or you have to go on Google just to check if the book is something you would like. That kind of upsets me because I don't care what the Sunday Times thinks or whatever, whoever blurbs the stuff. My third pet peeve is this. What is this? This thing on the cover. I get that it's for... I don't even get what it is for. It looks good, but the problem is when you read it, I tend to read like this. And then I like to, for some apparent reason, run my finger along the front cover. Now there's a thing there and it's bothering me. My finger tends to get stuck in this flippy thing. <laughs> I don't even know, front cover thing. Or when you pack it into your bookcase, it folds. And then it does funky weird thing. When you pull out your book from the book from your bookcase, it has folds and random stuff in there. I don't like these. They're not massively in my way or whatever, but I just don't like them. The fourth pet peeve I have is something that doesn't really bother me as much, but sometimes the covers just don't look good with them. And it's when there's people, like full-scale people, on the cover. For example, Amanda Hawking's The Trial Trilogy, this 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 edition i don't know but wendy looks like she's been squashed onto the cover and it just she looks so tiny and short I do, not that i have anything against short people or whatever you know well i think it bothers me that she doesn't have feet or anything so i'm trying to place a scale on her and you know, my brain just can't figure it out also a lot of times i don't like people on the cover because i'd like to imagine for myself how they look I know the people on the cover is like an indication, it doesn't have to be point blank that person. You get the main character who's on the cover and then the rest of the people you have to make up and that's no fun. So rather, you know, put half a face or I don't know, half a body. <laughs> that sounds so dark, but I, I don't know. Personally for me, people don't belong on books. <laughs> Maybe erotica, I'm guessing. I don't read erotica, but yeah. The fifth pet peeve I have is something that I haven't come across a lot, but it tends to happen, and it is when the editions are the same, but the font sizes are different. Usually when I read a series, I read the books after one another, and sometimes I finish one book, say for example, four o'clock in the afternoon, and then at 4.05, I would like to start reading the next book in the series, and then... There's the slight adjustment in the font size and it bothers my eyes so much. Like you don't think about that when you buy books, but the moment you open that book that you're like, oh, this really bothers me. Like I say, it's not something I've come across a lot, but it is something that I have noted with some of the books that I have. 
and then they are the same editions. The next pet peeve I have is books that come out with tiny font, like really, really tiny. I'm um, squint, okay. I need glosses to see. <laughs> Can, can we just talk, this hurts my eyes just scanning through it, but Ready Player One's font size is just so tiny. I don't mind a thick book. I honestly don't. I don't see why you want to make it thinner. But why is the font size so tiny? I would rather, you know, buy a different book that has a bit larger font size and has, say, for example, 500 pages than a book that has 300 pages and the font size is squished into it. It's, it's bothersome. Okay. The seventh pet peeve I have is when you get this nice cover, right? But the problem is with this printing stuff is it comes off through wear and tear. One of these days I'm either going to have to get silver paint or something and paint over this or I'm going to have to, I don't know, print the cover and just paste it on there again. It's, it's a nice book, it's a nice cover, but when the stuff comes off it's really annoying. Like I don't enjoy that. The eighth pet peeve I have is when there is no indication whatsoever that the book is coming out with a sequel or that there's a follow-up in the books. For example, The Burn Mark by, what's her name? Laura Powell. There's no indication in the book or in the back to say this book is a series or this book is a duology. And I, being the person that I am and being the book buyer that I am, don't check inside whether there's books or not. So I would really like an indication there. <laughs> Because the other day I discovered that there's a follow-up of this book and I wasn't aware of it and there's no indication about it. I guess you can Google it, but who stands in a bookshop and Googles if there's more to a series? You see the book and you're like, wow, okay, I like that book. And then two years down the line, you learn that there's another ser or there's another part in the book and you're like, oh, okay, now the book is more expensive than it was and it's just chaotic and j just give an indication whether there's another book coming out or if this is a standalone because i usually buy the books on sales especially bargain books is buy three four hundred and fifty rand and when you buy that usually with those books there's no indication that there's a follow-up book because if i knew this book was a series i wouldn't have bought it but here i am still looking for the second book and then the last pet peeve that I have is movie covers on books. I don't necessarily have an issue with it. It's the fact that, say for example, Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time just came out and the first book at many shops is only available with the movie cover on it. I want the original book with the original cover. If you're going to have a book with the movie cover on it, rather keep two in stock and the rest the original cover. That would be all for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, please remember to give it a like, give it a thumbs up, give it a whatever you want. Don't just, <laughs> no, <laughs> don't do that. Remember to subscribe if you want more bookish content. Comment down below what are your book pet peeves and I'll see you guys in the video next week. Bye!